So in this film, we're looking at a beta of the Photoshop 24.5 and the new remove tool. Um, if you've kind of followed uh, my Photoshop school, you'll know that I very rarely actually talk about betas because they usually cause more problem than anything else. However, um, the beta of the remove tool is just working perfectly uh, and you can kind of go ahead and download it. If you haven't been there, just go to your uh, Creative Cloud and then just come down through the categories and you'll click onto the beta apps. Once you've done that, um, you'll obviously have a install uh, button like here, um, but you'll basically click on the uh, install and then basically it's it's up and running and things ready. Um, there is a nice little opening screen, I should say as well. Uh, um, I won't say a friend, but a guy I spent quite a lot of time with uh, on the road, uh, you know, 20 odd years ago when Photoshop was just kind of getting into the lives of, uh, of many photographers, a, a commercial photographer called Martin Eve Evening. And when you launch it, there's actually a little kind of image of him and it's a, a really nice kind of touch. So thank you, well done on that and things really. Sad, uh, sadly, we've lost him now and things really, a young guy. So remove tool. Um, I'm going to use a couple of images for you, uh, but to be honest, um, you'll soon get actually used to how it works and things. Um, there's a couple of images that I thought we'd work on um, because as a rule, you probably wouldn't do a lot of this work until the client had actually physically bought the photograph um, or you're using a few portfolio or whatever it is. But um, it's so fast and so easy to use, you're probably going to actually try and refine when you're actually going to be doing things or not. So um, basically, if we kind of went into an image like we are here, um, I've just opened this up from RAW. You can see it's still a .cr2 file and uh, basically nothing being done to the photograph. If we just uh, check in history for a minute, see, it's just in the open. So I haven't done anything, all right? Um, let's just come on to the tools palette here and just below the eyedropper tool, uh, in my layout, I've got the remove tool. So clicking onto that. Now, what it's going to do is basically allow you to just swipe across like um, most of the kind of the AI tools within Photoshop. You use a slightly bigger brush um, than the actual thing itself, but this will allow you to pretty much um, just swipe across lots of different images. Now, as a rule, you know, these things might take us quite a lot of time, um, might even have to be clo a cloning from one place to another. Um, but if I kind of just demonstrate quite quickly what it's doing, I'm just kind of uh, going across it. Sometimes it's going to work very well instantly. Other times it's not going to work quite uh, as good. Like all the tools done, you'll soon learn to actually do it. Plus, um, you'll soon learn that you can kind of use some of the AI as a kind of a repair tool as well and things really. So we've got a little bit of kind of marking coming down here from the wet and so on with it. But a couple of things to begin with. Um, I'm working directly on the layer and that's not something I'd recommend. Um, so we're going to undo this fully and start from scratch. Okay. So if we just press the F12 key, uh, you know that undoes the image back to open, as it were. It is beta, so it might take a little bit of a, a, a kind of level um, to just undo itself and things. And a couple of little things at the top. Um, box here, sample all layers. Uh, we definitely want that because we're going to create a new layer and we're going to do all the work on that layer. And then we're actually going to look at the remove after each stroke. So if you're using the Wacom tablet or like I was just doing with the mouse there, just doing a stripe and then just goes ahead, uh, basically it's going to work. Otherwise, I've got to kind of go in and actually hit the tick mark to apply the changes. So let's quickly hit a new layer and work on this layer. So uh, let's just come in close. And as you can see here, all I'm doing is just kind of swiping across the hook, uh, doing its job, remove the shadow as well. It's done a great repair a repair job. If I um, uncheck the remove uh, after each stroke and I go across to this one and I just do it, it's basically waiting for something to happen. And at this point, I do have to actually hit the checkbox, as I said. So I'm basically using the uh, remove after each stroke. I, I think already it's quicker. 
So um, like anything now, just go across it. Remember, we're working on a separate layer. So pretty much we can mask out if we make any big errors as well. Uh, let's go in and just do these little ones. Uh, this is one of my favorite locations, not far from the old studio, in fact, uh, before we sold it. And um, it has all these great kind of colored huts, absolutely brilliant. It's on, it's on the beach. We're allowed to actually photograph down there at uh, different times of the year when the dogs are allowed on the beaches. Um, but again, you can see what a great job it's doing. Let's just go and tackle um, this one and just swipe around the outsides first. There we go. And then we'll just kind of do the green bar as well. Should have gone a little bit smaller on the brush, but in fact, that's done a really good job. To lose this kind of black line, um, all I'm going to do is just stroke down, uh, and that should help us. If not, we're going to have to go in and basically repair that. Okay, that's pretty good. So in other words, I just make that brush just a little bit smaller. Swipe across, so left to right. So that's not removing that. But if we kind of look at these little kind of door stops, the these kind of things, are, you know, as a rule, uh, oh, wrong button, let me just uh, control Z that for a minute. Um, these kind of little little details, we probably wouldn't touch until the client had actually said, yeah, I'm buying that image. You know, the splashes of paint on there. Um, now it's so easy to do. Why wouldn't we spend a few minutes? I, I would say if you're a dog photographer and you're using a lot of leashes, um, then you, def you definitely uh, would want to think about using this remove tool. Um, without any trouble. So let's just go in, make this a little bit bigger. Let's see how it's going to perform on the um, the bar. I'm probably going to need a little bit of work on here. I'm asking it to do quite a lot. The a oh, Well, in fact, I give up. <laughs> it's brilliant. Just fixing these little parts. So if I just stroke in the direction, it should start to look for the line um, of the actual board in anyway, and that's just kind of fixing stuff for me. Need to fix that middle part there. And again, like all new tools, we're going to need to um, learn how to use this. But as I said, I don't usually look at um, beta things because they usually just are clunky. Um, but some of the releases in the past few years, they really have kind of got their grips together before kind of releasing it. And I think it gives a good demonstration on um, kind of, is this going to be a part of the workflow of the, fu uh, the future? Um, Obviously, they don't kind of tell everybody exactly what they're playing around with. Um, but I, I I truly believe here for a, a kind of a user of Photoshop and not an expert of Photoshop, I think some of these techniques that I'm just doing, um, anybody can do them. That's the key thing. Yes, we've got some little marks on here. We can kind of fix those. But when you think how long this um, bracket would take to kind of have a quick fix and join the kind of little areas together. It's really doing a, a super, super job for us and things. There was another image um, at, at this location. I need to do some more work on the green there, but I think if we look at that before and after just here, that's quite a lot of work done in, you know, what, seven or eight minutes. Um, the... Uh, this uh, woman and her amazing dog uh, are shot down at the same kind of um, beach huts, as it were. And again, you know, it's just a shame they have to have all this security locks and everything else with it. But uh, let's kind of just do what I did. And this is one of the images I practiced on. In fact, the first image I had a go with was a black and white image. And um, I saw when I opened up straight away and I clicked onto the removal tool that this little kind of um, section has come up here, this box. So if I selected on the subject, 
uh, that kind of uh, did a good selection of him. And then if I went into the lasso tool and I basically hit the alt key and I just dragged down, got rid of the parts that uh, we didn't want, still need to add into this little bit of a selection there. Just do that. And um, again, with the new layer, and then all, all I did was pick up the remove tool again, and uh, obviously a bigger brush now because it's got a mask on it. Just needed, I missed his face there, should have done the face as well. But the AI is really wor working extremely well with it. And I think uh, in the, you know, the reality, if I did that again, I, as I said, I forgot to kind of paint his face, which is a bit of a shame. Here we go. Let it do it. Right. The key thing is uh, either click in that remove after each stroke or not, I think. And, and you can see the difference on that straight away. So again, for me, when I look at these things and I go, uh, how is this going to now work within the workflow? And for me, I always think, well, workflow, when these new things come along, is it going to be a big change or is it going to be a little change? Um, what is it going to do? So, you know, I've just got rid of the young boy there without any issues at all. And I kind of looked at it then. I went to this image because it is a, a difficult image. And um, if we just kind of throw that uh, new layer away, I would not work on this image much before I showed it to the client. Um, this is definitely the likes of a wall pull a portrait in the ma uh, the making. So I've always uh, done in-person sales. So I really want to make sure that the client is seeing the best of the best, as it were. And even things like, well, you know, what do I need to remove here? There's loads of things, all right? But let's kind of look at it in, or in order. What is the biggest thing we need to remove? First of all, distractions, yes? Things that are completely out of our control, but that might kind of get the client to think, well, I don't really want that because of... If we just go in and remove the big things, and then we actually have a look at um, how much repair work have we got to do to these quick fixes, um, that is how we then start to actually think about their use for us in ev everyday um, wor workflow. Uh, and I believe at this point that straight away, what we're seeing um, when I'm allowed to work around about a couple of minutes on each image that is going to be presented to the client, if I so wish to, fingers crossed, I'm going to photograph in a way that I'm not going to have to do a lot of work. But these little out of focus, even um, uh, clips down in the background, I probably would have ignored um, a bit like the security lighting on the top uh, right hand side until the client had physically said yep that's an image that I want to buy in the sales room but as is um, to present a client with a photograph knowing that even what I've done now could be pretty much uh, presented to the client straight away in a print box or in an album perhaps if they're going to have a very very big image we might want to do a lot more work to them but as I said, within a few short minutes to get to a point where we have pretty much done a 99.9% a .9 fix on it, I think that's pretty incredible, to be honest. There, there was another photograph that I kind of picked up in uh, Bridge, um, which was this lovely um, photograph of the woman here with the dog jumping up on her. And I think a client would have instantly disregarded this photograph if I hadn't done the basic retouching of the bracket on the left. It doesn't matter that I'm saying, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll remove that for you. They, they want to actually know about it straight away. So if we're kind of being photographers and we're fixing the main photograph as a photographer, but then we're going, okay, I cannot fix that at the time of the shoot, so I've got to do something. Then basically bringing it into the likes of uh, Photoshop to do its job is should be a kind of a, a, a non-clinical work uh, flow. 
Um, so even though I'm basically adjusting this one at a time, yep, um, you'll get a good idea on how I'm working with an image. So in other words, we're just waiting for the per person to be selected at this point. That's the AI again, kind of trying to find it. It's probably as quick for me to have actually got a brush tool and wiped across the face, but it's there. So let's click on the per person. And what do I want? I basically just want to soften down the skin, because the facial skin, because I've um, sharpened through texture the rest of the image. So all, all I'm going to do here is a slight increase in exposure, a very slight one and then coming down into my texture and knocking that back so it's nice and soft. And then pretty much I'm done with the majority of the image. If we open that up, I usually save it through to a JPEG file before I do anything. But now if we look at what we just did and we go, okay, we've got a couple of minutes to work on this image, to present it to the client um, for a kind of a re kind of almost guarantee sale. So if we click onto the uh, new layer, we select on the that remove tool straight away in here. I'm just going to go into the the tag and the clip, which is very common with the likes of dog photography to have the lead still on. Uh, then we want to work on uh, these things here, but there was, uh, there you go, just above her head, there's that hinge. I definitely wouldn't have touched this hinge before. I would have got rid of the dog's clip without a doubt, but I, I wouldn't have touched that. And there's no way I would have thought about um, taking the bracket off the wall, off the door, I should say, um, for the first preview to the client. Uh, why? Because it would just take too much work to do. So, as I said, if you're allowing yourself some workflow time with an image, can can it make us more money? Because that's really what workflow is going to make a, diff a difference to us. Um, I, I kind of try and show you um, how I use things rather than how somebody else uses stuff. Um, because at the end of the day, you're your own photographer, you're going to see what I'm doing and you're going to go, right, okay, I can see how that will work in my business as far as the, the uh, how, how it's going to work um, for my type of photography, for my type of clients. You can see I'm just trying to fix that a little bit there. Let's fix here. But we're at 99.5% again. And I do believe at this point, that is more chance to actually sell to a client than not with it. And is it worth the 30 second fix on this little bit of a door? Yes, it is, without a doubt. So you've got to find what is going to be right for you. But I believe that it's worth to download the beta um, to kind of allow yourself that little bit of um, quick fixing of stuff without any trouble. Hope you've enjoyed this first look. Uh, remember, go over to the um, Creative Cloud, come down to the beta, and basically click on the install button. Once it's done, then remember to actually click on the, uh, the open, and you're up and running.